there are a lot of people who are still living uh, there close to the mountain close to the volcano even if this volcano uh, it's active uh, government Italian government uh, try to move these people to a better place but they don't want to because they are very um, close to the mountain I mean they they don't want to move uh, they are fatalists let's say So we have arrived in Pompeii, we're just waiting for the groups all to get together. Uh, really nice journey down, a coach for the people. Uh, she's going to the toilet break now, the kids are in there, Joe's just come out and say hi Joe. Hi, it's impossible to get out of them. <laughs> and, and once we're inside we'll start recording, seeing what we can do. Lovely, but it's really hot today, it's a beautiful day. And you see the little lovely market area just over there. I hope we get a chance to look around there. Pick up a few knickknacks. Little things like coffee shops. There's a restaurant over there as well. So there's plenty to do here. So it's like a train you can get a little tour around on as well. Which I don't think we'll have time for, but we will see. But it's really nice here in Pompeii.
Uh, good morning everyone. Uh, so yesterday we went to Pompeii, which was absolutely amazing. It was really hot. Um, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, you know what you're going to get. It's, it's uh, cobblestone, it's old relics, old ruins. Very pretty, very beautiful. Something quite, something quite special to behold. When you look up from the main square and see Mount Vesuvius in the background, um, you think, oh, it's a long way away. And obviously all the um, devastation that came um, all those years, nearly, nearly 2,000 years ago. Um, it's something quite special to behold. Um, we had a coach party, so we got a coach, we were picked up from here in the hotel, or from the, the, the village, uh, taking us all the way out to Pompeii. Um, guided round, we had a guided round. I didn't do much speaking as we were going round, because I had a, a little earpiece in uh, listening to our tour guide. Um, obviously when you're listening it's hard to speak at the same time so most of it is simply visual um, and I did a bit of um, video on, on the coach as well but just as, as the scenery changed so every quarter of an hour just suddenly you, you, you're moving out into a different sort of scenery and the mountains start appearing and then you see Vesuvius and some very fascinating um, tales of those the three million people that live um, in the footprint of, of Vesuvius and, and it's still an active volcano it hasn't erupted since which is 1944, but it's still considered to be an active volcano. And they're saying that there's actually um, 600,000 people that live in in the, the, the danger zone. Um, so basically the danger zone is, if this is erupted, uh, those people would be at uh, risk of life, but they will not move. They are staying put and they will not move away from that location, uh, even though they've had offers from the Italian government apparently to move and uproot them and move them elsewhere. No one's willing to do so, um, and it is such a beautiful part of the world, it really, really is, but obviously it's uh, potentially quite dangerous, and uh, it's been 80 years since it's erupted, but it's still very much an active volcano. Uh, after that, we had a, a guided coach tour around Naples, Naples is insane. The traffic, and you know, you're watching it, I'm watching it out the window of the coach, and you're seeing these scooters whizzing, whizzing out of traffic. And on, on that note, I, I'm so happy I'm not driving in Italy because I don't understand how it works. It seems to be like this complete disorganised chaos, but it kind of just works. Um, even on something we would consider like a roundabout, th there doesn't seem to be any, you know, you have right away, it's just who goes first goes. And when you threw that into Naples as well, and you've got these scooters zipping in, zipping out, you know, if, if I'm driving through where we live and the scooter zips in front of me as I'm putting forward, um, I'm not very happy about that. But it just seems to be the way it is and nobody cares. And you're looking at drivers who you know, missed the scooter by millimetres, just all calm and casual and the scooter doesn't care and the driver doesn't care. And Naples itself, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating to drive around. And Karen made a very good observation that obviously Naples is football mad. And you can see it because I'll put photos in this in this video. But there's apartment blocks where every window's got a flag out or the football colours out, and obviously the blue and white of Naples or Napoli. And what's very evident is that Maradona is an absolute god there, always will be. Um, it's insane, Naples. I've never seen anywhere like it. And so Karen made an observation that we were going around on a Wednesday in um, in June. Um, and there's no football on, there's nothing going on, it's just how the city is. And it's almost as if, you know, if England won the World Cup, I don't see London being anywhere near as decorated as Naples was. So today we're off to the Vatican City, we get in the bus and in the tube, and uh, I will give you an update once we're there. Thank you guys.